The tolerable upper limit for choline is currently 3,500 milligrams per day. If we use one teaspoon of choline citrate for every two magnesium, do we need to be concerned with exceeding this upper limit? At six capsules per day, we would exceed it. Well, you're absolutely right that the safe upper limit is something to be understood, kind of like the daily values. So I'm going to talk for a moment about the daily values, then we'll come back <clears throat> to the uh, primary issue of safe upper limits. The daily value is the amount you need to avoid deficiency diseases. To avoid deficiency diseases, deficiency diseases like kwashiorkor, pellagra, scurvy. I don't want you to have any of those deficiency diseases. But now I look at the science behind the daily value and the science behind the safe upper limit is built off of the daily value and here's what they do. And this is the Institute of Medicine, an esteemed, it's like our National Academy of Medicine. Esteemed scientists form a committee, they sit around the table and they do the following. They say, we know about low dose effects because we have many studies of fairly large numbers of different groups of people studied at low levels, say specifically for what we're talking about. And so we have a high degree of confidence in the safety of the evidence at low doses. Now what about the doses, the high doses? What about the doses that the Alkin way of living recommends? The safe upper limit is set at one-tenth, one-tenth, let me say again, at 10% of the potentially, theoretically, harmful amount. So let me translate that into English. If the safe upper limit is 3.5 grams, 3,500 milligrams or something like that, it means that at 35 grams, at 10 times that, they began to have evidence of reason for worry, but out of an excess of caution for the lack of large-scale studies on high doses with large numbers of people. Out of an excess of caution, they divide their top number by 10. So for choline, for magnesium, for zinc, for a number of the essential nutrients <clears throat> where the Institute has set safe upper limits, the safe upper limit is below the therapeutic threshold if you follow the joy of living the alkaline way, or more importantly, if you just look at the biochemistry. So very important questions, important questions about why the joy of living the alkaline way has been designed out of an excess of caution, but out of an understanding of physiology before pharmacology. So we don't assume that nutrients are medications. And in a sense, these safe upper limit values, say, uh, for um, the, the, the full range of chemicals we're talking about, or nutrients that we're talking about, the safe upper limit is very often below the amount necessary to keep a healthy person in the 21st century healthy. So yes, the safe upper limit is an important caution. We need to understand how it's defined. It's defined as 10% of the upper level where they begin to see problems and then divided by 10 out of an excess of caution. Well, if you want to follow an excess of caution, I think following our joy of living the alkaline way is sustainable and really done out of a, a true excess of respect and caution to use physiology before pharmacology, to use nature, nurture, and wholeness as our guides, and not the assumption that nutrients are kind of drugs, or at least they need to be uh, assessed for efficacy and safety in the same model that we use for pharmaceutical development. And there are a number of us, I'm in that camp, that says the physiology of life is very different than the pharmacology of pharmaceuticals and that we don't need that excess of caution when we have combined the family of what's needed in essential nutrients into a team, into a symphony, 
uh, into a ballet, into a choreography that allows each to work well without making any one uh, the uh, sole agent, which is what pharmacology generally tries to do. Isolate an active agent and give that specific and only isolated agent uh, in a safe and effective dose. And there we find that the ED, the effective dose, and the TD, toxic dose, are often very close to each other, so an excess of caution is entirely appropriate in the absence of data. Well, the absence of data is not data of absence, as my friends often say. And so um, this question of safe upper limits uh, has come up over the decades. My answer has always been the same. Perk acts from an excess of caution in a way that says physiology before pharmacology. And frankly, we don't confuse nutrients with um, potentially toxic uh, pharmaceuticals.